that she gave me uh, was I think 86 inches uh, from the floor to floor but that was actually I think she said to where she wanted the top step but really when we're laying out stairs we want to know what it is from the floor uh, to the other landing to the other floor so what she told me was 97 inches was the actual uh, distance so I'm going to uh, put a construction line there and I'm going to edit this loft and bring it up um, and I'm going to choose that line, that construction line and now we should have what, 8 foot 1? Yeah. So now we can go ahead and get rid of that construction line and really the only thing we can save about this set of stairs is maybe one of the treads so we'll just move it aside for right now we'll put it over here and we'll zap the rest of it and of course we'll get rid of this pattern and um, we'll delete these lines erase those lines off of our pretty 2 by 12 and we'll start over I think a good combination is still 9 get my calculator my trusty phone out here so 97 inches divided by 9 would be 10.77 make nine risers at 10.777 inches so again I'm going to go down and I'm going to come down this corner 10.77 go ahead and put another seven on there just to make sure I'm pretty accurate and then I'm going to come out eight we're going to keep our eight inches and I'm going to go back up and match that line and we'll just for for now we'll go over uh, uh, 22 inches and we'll s make that a group and we'll just copy that down and times how many do we have we'll just say uh, eight for now probably one short um, because I started out with one let's see see we're still at 64 inches from there oh yeah uh, I just gotta erase this one and bring it down so what I'm gonna do is make this a group and bring it down 10.777 inches and there we go. You can see we're right on our 64 inch line that she wanted to set as sort of a, uh, a, a an extent of how far the stair came out. I'll just move it down a little bit so we can see. And so we'll go through the same process we went through before. We'll take our pencil and we'll trace this out like that. And we'll when we buy our two by twelves, we know they're 11 and a quarter. So we'll offset this line 11 and a quarter. So now you just want to take this bottom line over to where it intersects with that 11 and a quarter. Right there. I think I accidentally omitted this part before. And then there we go. There's our, there's the shape of our 2 by 12. And then we know it's an inch and a half thick. So, well, let's see. Let's get rid of the little triangles first. Uh-oh. Hmm. Oh, that's right. I forgot to trace out the risers and treads. I'm trying to do this in a hurry, aren't I? Did I get that one? Sometimes you can't tell if you've gone over a line before. Take those 
out. Oops. What did I do? If that happens, that means you didn't, or your little lines didn't connect. Let's move this over out of the way and we can see what's happening. That's what's happening. This line is missing right here. So it might be easier just to move your original group out of the way so you can see if your lines are there. Um, we'll pull this over an inch and a half and there's our stringer. And then like before, we can just get rid of that, that block and that group and we will make this a group now so we can manage it. Get rid of that construction line. And we'll copy this over uh, 22 inches. What we'll do now is we'll take our tread, bring it over, push that back to there, and then bring it back an inch. And then we'll copy this up. And we'll do that eight times. Oops. Sometimes it just... It's always user error, though. I was going to say, sometimes it doesn't work the way you want it to, but I didn't put the times mark in. There we go. And I copied it up. And I thought I'd do the next one when I did. So we'll delete that one. So there you go. So what that is, 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 um, 10, we'll see what 10.77 inches is. It's a little over 10 and 3 quarters. 10 and 3 quarters is basically your riser. And then 8 inches uh, is your tread. And... Again, you just want to make sure that your 2x12 is long enough so that you don't have to use the ends of it. Because if you notice, when you go to buy them, they'll be, sometimes they'll have splits up, even up to a foot. And what will happen is, if that split, I'll give you an example. If you run this board down, if you, run, if you try to do it to here, and you've got a split, when you... Um, when you, go to, when you cut out your stringers, anywhere along this line right here, you could have a crack. Let's say it even goes to here. You see? Well, this whole end, of this whole triangle will fall off and break off. If it has any kind of fracture at all, any kind of, you know, even if there's a knot hole here, when you start, this is why you use screws, too, so there's not a lot of stress. You're not banging nails on, you know, banging this with a hammer driving nails into it. You should pre-drill holes into your into your treads. A couple of holes there and run screws down in there because um, you start, you know, again, you start banging on this with a hammer and these triangles can fall off. Uh, trust me, I've had many heartbreak uh, where, where my crew has decided they weren't going to use screws and they can start banging 16 inch nails you know, 16 inch, <laughs> 16 penny nails into these things and they crack off. So you want to get you a long, uh, you know, two to four foot longer 2 by 12 and uh, and center that thing on that. Okay, so just to kind of remind you of how we did this and you can go back and look. Grab the saw horse and not the framing square. What you do is you take your framing square and, and again, I'm going to move it down away from the end of that board. Okay, so this this should be set on 10 and 3 quarters. A little over, it was like 10.77, remember? So you might want to just barely hold it over 10 and 3 quarters, but make sure you're doing it the same every time. We'll zoom in here, grab that point. This is, again, our pencil. We're marking this out. And for your first one, then you want to bring this line back this way, okay? And then you'll move your framing square down 
where it intersects with that line. See? Let's see if I get it close. Now I want to bring it back a little bit. Now they make the little knobs that you can screw on your framing square that help you hold it. See how I got that lined up with an 8? And then you just trace around that. I like could edit mode on that. And snap your pencil from there to here. Back up to your 10 and 3 quarter inch mark. Okay? And then you simply just... I'm going to use uh, this as a reference. This pattern we've already got. I'm going to move it down. Oops, I copy the framing square. I'll just delete that one. So you see how that works? So you just go down through there and mark each one of them until you count. And you know from your drawing, because you're going to lay this out in a drawing, hopefully you can get the free version of SketchUp first and learn how to do that. And you can reference your drawing and you say, oh, i got to do that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. So one thing I realized in this video and the other video, I didn't actually show how to mark out this top part. And I thought I would show that really quick. I know the video is probably getting long, but uh, I just thought it was kind of uh, needed. And then you'll take your framing square and move it. Um, well, it's all already going to, well, it'll just move to here. And then you will make just riser, I mean the trade part of it, let me get my pencil, I'll start right there, and you'll just come to there, and then what you'll do is you'll bring, um, now, you can just continue that line on the cross uh, to make it easy to cut that off, but the line you're actually going to cut to make the back of the stringer is just get, get the angle right. Then uh, you can move your framing square out of the way, and then you'll see that you'll have those lines. But what you'll do is just cut that, cut that whole thing off there, and then cut that whole thing off there, like that. And then you'll come down, and again, cut, just cut. Don't cut past the lines like that. Just cut to them and use a handsaw to finish it out. Let's pretend we're. And see, down here, you can do the same thing. You can take this line and continue it on across. As long as you keep up with um, what you're supposed to keep. Supposed to cut. And there we go. Get two stringers. Okay, I couldn't couldn't help myself. I had to go get a Craig. <laughs> I had to go look at the three D warehouse and in, in um, SketchUp. And this is what's cool about SketchUp is you can go to the 3D warehouse and everybody in the world has put models you know online that you can just grab and so I figured there would be a Craig uh, pocket uh, jig tool and what you do is you just you would um, take this and orient it on your work uh, let's see if I can get this done quickly and there's videos you can watch to show you I, and I'll put a few links to mine like I said earlier but uh, what you do is put that on your work like that, and then you, you through these uh, guides, you run your drill bit through there, and it makes the pocket. So that's just an example. Um, I'm to move that out of the way. So what you would do is make yourself two pockets in the stringer like this. And what this does is it creates a very secure hole, a very good hole, and this is the strongest attachment method you can come up with uh, the most reliable uh, using screws and pockets 
at an angle at that angle uh, and you won't have to have any exposed like brackets like the other option is you can get 90 degree brackets and put them in the corner uh, or you can just try to screw the screws in but that's just not very neat looking when you put the fillers the plugs in these holes you can sand them smooth and if you're going to paint this or stain it you'll have a neat little oval there that'll stain differently than the surrounding wood and it's really cool if you lay these out with proper spacing then you can actually make it part of the art I made a, a dresser uh, one time and it was all based on pocket jig, uh, pocket Craig tool uh, fasteners as being the accent uh, for the, the, the piece of furniture and it, as long as they're laid out neatly and spaced you know evenly whatever they look really nice and uh, the screws hold really well so anyway that was just a brief uh, run through of the pocket uh, jig and you do two here to there and then and, and kind of visualize all this while you're doing the screws then you have two going in to the floor there and two going into the floor there now you could probably skip like right here you know, probably wouldn't want to have these pockets inter inter interfering with each other so maybe you do just uh, pre-drill some holes in your treads and run two little trim screws down which you can cover over with wood putty uh, and stain or paint over them. That might be the neatest way to go. So, anyway, guys, hope that helps. And, uh